In this screen cam I'm going to show you several ways of actually getting probes to voltages or currents into the uh, simulation tool. First way, we can connect our voltage probes at the top here and place them on the schematic like so. So in this case a voltage probe goes on a wire. If you want to see a current probe, a current probe doesn't go on a wire because current flows through the wire, so you'd have to know which direction. Current flows into the node of a circuit, so you'd place it, for example, here on the, on the collector of this transistor. We're not going to be looking at currents in this case. So, we now have two voltage probes. We want to do a simple transient simulation. So let's go to Edit Simulation Settings. As you can see here, we're going to run for 10 milliseconds. 5 microseconds resolution. This means you're going to be reasonably accurate in your sine wave. If you don't put any value there, you'll get, shall we say, slightly peaky waveforms. Click OK. Let's go away and simulate. As you can see, we're now netlisting and creating the header structures. The simulation trace is now completed, as you see behind this dialog box down the bottom, and we see two waveforms. The green waveform, nice and small, and the red waveform, quite large and this is labelled V, V2 plus and VR load 2. Okay, let me go back to the schematic and explain that. This component here is V2, and that's the voltage source. So it's labelled one of the nodes, so you, so you get that cryptic, to, uh, cryptic time, V2 colon something. And here you've got R load colon 2, so that's the second node of that resistor. An easier way of getting such uh, information would be to label the wires with the label tool N1. I'm going to label the input V in. Click OK and click on the row, on the uh, wire. You have to be on the wire when you do that. I'm going back to the label tool and I'm changing it now to V out. If I didn't change it, the wire would be a short circuit because you could do that around everywhere. I've now got V in and V out. I'm going to run the simulation again and you'll see what that As you can see, here's the AUKAD trace this time, V V in. VV out. So in effectively the node of the wire or the wire name has been labelled so it's very easy to find. Now let's just try one more thing. Let's say for example we actually don't care about the AC signal, V in and V out. We want to know what's happening at the base, the DC level and the signal, and what's happening at the collector, the DC signal and the AC signal superimposed. So we've already got a simulation trace up, we need to actually on here, as you can see, what we need to do now is we need to go to the Trace menu. When we hit Trace, we can add a trace, and we've got all of these waveforms. These are current waveforms, voltage waveforms, or aliases. If we turn the alias off, the power off, and the currents off, we're now just left with voltages. You can see that some of them have been labelled V in. We're not interested in those at this time. What we are interested in is, for example, the voltage at the collector clicking on that one has dropped into this bottom pane. If we wanted to do any maths on that waveform, we could do that using this pane here, so we could turn it into logarithms or various other things. We don't want to do that at this time. So let's just click OK. We now have a sinusoidal waveform, which is what's leaving the circuit, but as you can see it's sat on top of a DC bias. If you want to know exactly where it is on the DC bias, we use the cursor and we find the peak of the waveform. We use the right mouse button for the second cursor. We find the trough of the waveform. We now have exactly the peak to peak value of that sine wave and we have the maximum and the minimum voltage. So if you take the minimum, if you take the maximum, subtract the minimum, divide by two, add on to the minimum, you get the DC bias level in the middle. Another way that's not quite as accurate, if I put all the cursors out of the way, is to go here and look for the what's called the point of inflection. The point of inflection on a sine wave is where the gradient changes from being positive to negative, which should be at the DC bias. There you go. You've now seen three or four different ways of labelling voltages, labelling nodes, and finding waveforms on the schematic.